Hi there Transform fans, this is Kids from Flap 1313 bringing you another video review and this time I've got for you the Transformers Prime uh, Robots in Disguise Deluxe Soundwave Wow this figure, oh my god, this this character as well is amazing in the, uh, in the cartoon, he's so in a way he's very unique, he's a very unique character um, obviously this this is amazing this the the uh the figure is just superb um the detail that's gone into it is just amazing and overall it is just a, it's just fantastic it's even got a little landing gear there which i find is just such a unique feature i think this is like a drone thing i think they like sent this in that like the i think military have these and they sort of send these drones in i think they're unmanned i think they're unmanned, but obviously this one doesn't need an unma uh, a, a man to drive it. It's got a, a, a robot to do it, and uh, the, the the character is just so unique, different. Uh, he's got hardly any voice. He uses other spit. I just really find him really a strange and interesting character to have in the uh, the um, the TV show. Um, and it's it's a good toy. It's a good, it's a good figure. Uh, the the vehicle is quite big. In all fairness, I actually think this might have been a really nice figure to have in a Voyager size. I know that sounds a bit odd, but to have a Voyager plane like this, especially when it goes next to Optimus, doesn't seem that big. And I think Soundwave, he was quite tall. I think he was sort of same, if not a little bit smaller than Starscream. And I mean, this this could easily. You know, if it was a Voyager, become uh, sort of a deluxe t to Voyager size. Um, it's pretty big, but the wingspan is pretty cool as well. And also, if you wanted to, this is part of the transformation. You could actually grab these out if you want and actually just make a super long plane. So that is then Voyager. See that that is Voyager for me. That the size of the wings. That's a Voyager. Um, but uh, I, I just, I really, really like this figure. It's so, it's just so unique. I'm going to keep saying that word unique because it really is. Um, and he's just a fantastic character. Uh, now, obviously, what is Soundwave without any of his uh, minions? And obviously, this thing here, this thing that I'm moving, if I pull this out, this is uh, his little drone thing. This is Laser Beak. Um, he's got limited articulation, but... Uh, that's fine. So normally when he's in the chest it sort of looks like that. But obviously we know Soundwave sort of... <coughs> Sorry about that. Sort of like that with his wings sort of... Yeah, like that. So this is like... Again, this is like a very small drone thing that flies around. Obviously in hand it's pretty small, but in the in the um, the program it's actually pre pretty big to be honest. And... Uh, that it, it actually picks up humans. You wouldn't expect it for this sort of a f figure, but this ac this actually does pick them up. So that can actually be stored in Soundwave. There's a peg on the top here, which I think you could... Yeah, you can. You can peg him in there. So if you wanted some sort of like satellite thing, or just to add extra flaps to the plane, do that. Obviously, though, it pegs in to the to the chest there, so I'm just going to leave it in there um, like so, so you can just fold that up and put it against the side and that just, it hides away pretty good, so I'm happy with that anyway, on to the transformation, so first things first is you want to uh, get his head really so uh, come to the no the not nose cone, the, uh, the back of the plane or the thruster and just pull that out and they, as soon as you open that, it literally springs forward with its head. Um, so you can move it slightly, it's on two separate joints I think. So you can either have it straight down next to laser beak or slightly up and it just shows a bit more of that dark blue detailing. Obviously it's a little bit hard to do that when it's on an angle like that. Um, so you can do that and then you can uh, fold the nose cone back in, or nose cone, thruster back in and then put that where the head was and that will then support the head for wherever it is so you've got that bit there let me just raise this up because otherwise you're not going to be able to see it properly and I don't really want that to be honest so then you want to grab the wings the whole wing so just literally grab the thing and pull it out and you can see the peg there which goes into the leg 
and then you can just push these up and this is pretty cool because you get a sort of uh, you get a sort of there we go click so just unfold untab them away from the sides and then you can just sort of slide them in and that will then complete the chest there you can then fold these down on an angle and just leave them like that sort of reminds me of um, oh, what's the jackhammer from there's that um, springy figure rampage yeah rampage and you, you use the thing and it's, it, that reminds me of that slightly yeah <laughs> Um, so anyway, uh, moving on, you want to just split the uh, the whole plane, or the front of it, in half. And there's quite a few pegs that hold it all together. There's one, two, three, four, about five. Yeah, five. Five. Six. Oh, five. We'll go with five. Um, so just split that, and then just come around here. Obviously you don't need a twist of waist. Come to the nose cone and rotate that all the way up. Then flip this piece back. And then flip the foot forward. Or just enough to sort of become a foot. And you can see this is obviously going to become a sort of heel thing. And do the same on the other side. So fold that up, fold that up, fold that round. And then you can do the sort of chicken leg thing which sort of just puts him down a little bit. I mean, if you want him to become a little bit taller, then do so, but uh, you can then just mess with his legs and stand him up. Make sure to just use those back things just to hold him up. And then you are pretty much there. And all you have to do is fold out those arms like we did making the Voyager jet. <laughs> So just fold them out, and they peg into the peg here through the, and the hands has got a hole in for uh, a reason. Uh, so then unpeg the wing here, and that will then give you that joint there. So fold, fold that out again, and then unpeg, and then you can rotate that, and then you can just mess around with the figure to get him to your liking. So. You can have the arms sort of down like that, like he normally is. I think they're normally like down there. And let's just try and stand him up without him falling over. There we go. And there's Deluxe Soundwave in his robot mode. I really like this. He's, again, up there, possibly with the Wheeljack figure. This is a really good representation of a cartoon, especially a cartoon. I'm surprised that cartoon figures can actually, because sometimes they sort of like uh, use that to their advantage to sort of make it look really odd. But they pull off these figures amazingly um, and it looks so accurate to be honest. Um, obviously maybe in some places there might not be that, you know, there's a few bits and bobs that aren't 100% there. But for the most part I really like the the overall design of the, the figure. <clears throat> The articulation is especially nice as well, seeing as you can, uh, if I can show you, if you sort of put his arm like that, and if we detach laser beak, now I don't, don't 100% know, oh, I've never noticed that, there's actually a sort of a waist joint there, whether that's used for anything, I don't know, but you can just push that there. So, I don't know whether, I know he actually comes out flies around, but I've never, I don't think I've ever remembered uh, laser beak to actually come along in his little wing mode and sort of perch himself on his arm, um, sort of more like more like Aah! more like that so we can actually see him and they can sort of talk but you can have that sort of mode obviously he did have um, that weapon that was on the side of his arm uh, that was it like the sound thing and he like did it on Wheeljack and uh, then Knockout got it. <laughs> but uh, you know you can get some pretty good poses. You can keep him all dull like that if you want to or you can like really use it and sort of have him using his arm as a sort of shield maybe. Um, he's, a, he's just a really really unique character and he's worth picking up if you if you want this uh, this one of these to set oh especially this specific uh, Decepticon in your uh, 
in your collection. This one is definitely on the top one. I mean, I like the um, the Fall of Cybertron and uh, War of Cybertron. Uh, I don't know if it, I don't think I just said the same thing twice. Um, <laughs> but I, I like that one because you you know you could put the discs in it and the Deluxe and the Voyager had their differences. Um, but that one was good. You've had the sound wave from. Uh, the movie, I haven't had the car version, but I had the satellite, that was okay. Um, but this one definitely makes up for it, and I think this is probably the best Soundwave figure that we have had. Um, so, yeah, overall, I'm happy with this figure. Uh, I think, you know, you can pull off some pretty good poses with him. He looks very much like he normally is in the, normally is, like he is in the, um, cartoon. And I just think he's a really creepy character, and he's uh, very, very unique. <laughs> so anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this review, and please make sure to subscribe for more of these reviews, especially seen as Age of uh, Extinction is coming very soon, so I will be uh, posting videos of the, um, the figures, and also I will be doing a competition, which I will let you know more about that sort of soonish. Um, so yeah. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.